Hello and welcome to Career Talk. Today we are going to discuss ten most difficult, but at the same time most asked business analyst interview questions. Friends, my name is Sunan Sharma. I'm an agile consultant based in Netherlands, and on this channel we invite industry experts to share their valuable experience and insight with all of us. Before we start, if you are new to our channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and join our family of Career Talk. And at the end of the session, don't forget to give us a like and leave a comment to let us know what you thought about this session. Your support means a lot to us and help us to keep bringing you valuable content. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, friends, today we have Kanu Bhutani with us, who is a I senior am. business analyst and known face on our channel. We had done several sessions on real business analyst interview questions and answers with him in the past. So I will put a couple of links in the description. You can go and watch those sessions as well. So welcome, Kanu, and thanks for your time today, Kanu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunan. And it is nice to again come and uh, have a session with you. Okay. Thanks, Kanu. So uh, if you allow us, shall we start? Yes, sure. Okay. So the very first question is, as a business analyst, can you describe a time? when you had to analyze a large amount of data to make a decision based on that particular data and how do you approach this task and what were the results? Tanu. Yes, sure. Uh, so uh, as a senior business analyst, uh, I was working for a retail company and we were looking into improving the inventory management system. So to accomplish that, I had to analyze massive amount of data, including the sales data, the inventory levels, the product turnover rates, and the customer demand patterns. So I first approached the task by identifying the key performance indicators that were most relevant to our goal. Then I used the data visualization tools like Tableau and Excel and created the different charts, the graphs, and pivot tables to help me better understand the data. Then I also statistically analyzed the techniques such as regression analysis and the correlation analysis to identify any significant relationship between the data sets. Finally, after analyzing that, I presented my findings to where I uh, said that the, uh, uh, the new system, we should implement a new inventory management system that will enable the company to reduce the overstocked items, the increased product turnover rates and improve the customer satisfaction levels. So when we actually implemented the new inventory system, the results were outstanding. We had uh, reduced the overstocked items by 20%, increased the product turnover rates by 15%, and the customer satisfaction levels by 10%. The new system also helped the company to reduce the costs associated with carrying excessive inventory, and it really boosted the profitability. So uh, that, that is the way we uh, uh, did and manage the huge amount of data that we had. Wonderful, wonderful, Kanu. Great, thanks uh, for that uh, answer, Kanu. Okay. Yes. So the next one is, uh, can you describe a time when you had to work with a team to solve a complex business problem? And how do you contribute to the team? And what was the outcome, Kanu? Yes. Uh, as a senior business analyst, uh, I was working for a very large financial services company and uh, uh, I was tasked with leading a cross-functional team to address a major issue that we had with our database servers and that was causing significant downtime and loss of data. So to address that issue, I collaborated with our IT team and IT department to analyze the root cause analysis of the problem. Then I closely worked with the data analyst in the team to determine the impact of the downtime on our business operations. And then I developed a plan to mitigate these risks. We implemented uh, several measures to in, uh, address this issue, including the upgrading of our database, the server 
hardware, the implementing a most robust backup system and recovery system, and then improving our monitoring and alerting process. So throughout the project, I contributed on uh, uh, guidance and providing the support to the team, facilitating the communication between the different departments, ensuring that they are stayed on track with our timelines and budgets. I also conducted regular meetings with key stakeholders to update them on our progress and obtain their feedback. So as a result, we got uh, a significant reduce on the downtime and data loss. The databases and the servers showed the positive impact on our business operations and customer satisfaction. Uh, we also uh, helped to build the stronger relationship between our IT teams and departments and the other areas of the business which led to the effective collaborative uh, solutions for our future projects and also uh, help the stakeholders to uh, get the uh, good inputs from uh, what we presented. Yes. Excellent, Kano. Excellent. Great. Okay. So the next one is, I think, uh, most asked and it's most challenging uh, question to answer for yes. the business analyst. And the question is, can you describe a time when you have to communicate technical information to non-technical audience or non-technical client? So how do you tailor your message that can be understandable and relevant to your audience? So that's the question, Kanu. Yes, uh, right. Yeah, we certainly, as a, being a business analyst, we face this issue many a times when we see that uh, our clients who are there, they are not much technical expertise with them. So uh, uh, in that particular instance, uh, what we dis uh, decided that discussing a new software solution uh, that would be greatly enhancing their current workflow processes uh, and uh, uh, how could we explain that to the client? So we were having uh, uh, difficulties in getting the technical jargons being used. So to tailor my message, I started by using more accessible language and avoiding technical terms wherever possible. Also, I used the real-time examples to help illustrate the concepts that I was presenting. And I made sure that I asked questions to check their understanding. Additionally, I used the visual aids like the diagrams and flowcharts to help better understand and break down the complex processes into simpler and digestible pieces of information. By doing so, I was able to uh, bridge the gap between the technical details and the client's understanding of the solution. And in the end, the client was able to grasp the concepts and make informed decisions about the solutions implementation. This experience actually taught me to how uh, important it is to being flexible in the communication style and adapting to the needs of my audience, especially when discussing technical information with the non-technical stakeholders. Yes. Great, Kanu. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> I think you have covered all the major points over there. Great. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, next, question, next question is on conflict management. Again, very important question. So can you describe a time when you had to gather requirement from multiple stakeholders with conflicting needs? And how do you prioritize and balance these conflicts requirements? So that's a question, Khan. Yes, as a uh, business analyst, I have encountered many situations where I had to gather requirements from multiple stakeholders with conflicting needs. One example that comes into my mind is that when I was working for a healthcare organization, the stakeholders included the doctors, nurses, administrators, and the patients, and each one of them were having unique needs and perspectives. So to prioritize and balance these conflicting requirements, I followed a structured approach. One was conducted, I conducted the stakeholder analysis. I identified first the key stakeholders, their needs, 
and their level of influence on the project. Then I held individual meetings with each stakeholder. I met with each stakeholders to understand their specific needs and concerns. After that, I analyzed the requirements. I gathered all the requirements from each stakeholders and grouped them based on some similarity. Then the fourth point was conducted a prioritization exercise. I conducted a prioritization exercise with all the stakeholders and understand their priority requirements. Then I presented a list of prioritized requirements to the stakeholders and negotiated a compromise to balance the conflicting requirements. So for instance, during the project for a healthcare organization, doctors required a user-friendly and secure medical record system Whereas the patients required the personalized approach in the delivery of healthcare services. So in order to balance these conflicting requirements, I consulted with the IT department to design a system that had a user-friendly interfaces while ensuring the security of medical records. And I also suggested that the patients could be offered personalized healthcare services through telemedicine and this approach was appreciated by both the stakeholders as well as the uh, patients. And uh, overall, it uh, successfully managed to prioritize and balance the conflicting requirements of multiple stakeholders. Great, yes. uh, Kalu, that was great. So you Thanks. just mentioned about prioritization in your answer just now. So can you describe a time when you had to manage a multiple projects or multiple tasks at the same time? And how do you prioritize your work and stay organized? So if you can elaborate more on that part, prioritization part, Kanu. Yes, this is very important because as a being as a senior business analyst, we sometimes have to work with multiple projects and multiple use cases and uh, uh, that too simultaneously. So uh, one example that comes in my mind is while working with a retail client, I had to simultaneously manage three different projects uh, to improve their supply chain management, optimizing their pricing strategy, and then enhancing their customer loyalty program. So to prioritize my work and stay organized, I use following steps. First, set clear priorities. I identified the most critical uh, tasks which were there to, uh, to the success of each project and which needed to be completed first. I then organized my tasks based on importance and urgency, creating the to-do list for each project. Then scheduling the time, I created the schedule for myself that allocated specific blocks of time for each project so I could focus on each task without being overwhelmed. I also blocked off time in my calendar to avoid scheduling conflicts. Then monitoring progress. This I regularly checked on the progress of each project and adjusted my priorities and scheduled accordingly. If the task was taking longer time than expected or was proving more challenging than anticipated, I would reevaluate my priorities and make adjustments as needed. And finally, communicate with stakeholders. I kept a regular contact with stakeholders to provide updates on progress and ensure that I was meeting their needs and expectations. And by doing so, I was able to successfully manage all the three projects and ensure that each one of them was completed on time and to the satisfaction of my clients. So that is the way. Great. Great, Kanu. Thanks, Thanks. for that. Okay. Now, uh, because you're a senior guy, I think I can ask you this question. And this is going to be important for all those senior people out there, business analysts. So the question is, can you describe a time when you had to present your analysis or whatever the recommendation which you have to the group of a decision makers who is going to take the decisions, right? Based on your uh, input. So how do you prepare for this kind of presentation? And uh, if you can share some of your stories, that will be great. Anu. Yes, sure. Uh, 
So uh, uh, in this way, I had numerous opportunities to present my analysis and recommendation to group of decision makers. So one particular example which is coming into my mind is while I was working with the healthcare industry to identify the potential areas for cost savings. So to prepare for this presentation, I began by reviewing all the data that I had collected and looking to the patterns and trends that could help support our recommendations. I then created a clear and concise presentation that highlighted our findings and proposed solutions. I also made sure to practice my delivery several times to ensure that I was comfortable and confident presenting the information. During the, during the presentation, I was able to effectively communicate our findings to a group of decision makers, and they were very receptive to our recommendations. In fact, they were so impressed with the analysis that they decided to implement all our suggestions, resulting in significant cost savings for the organization. So overall, I believe that the key success in presenting analysis and recommending the decision makers is to be well prepared, concise, and confident. So by effectively communicating your findings and proposals, you can uh, bring a significant impact on the success of organization. So, Great. Yes. Thanks, uh, Kanu, for that. Okay. Welcome. So next one is, uh, can you describe a time when you had to troubleshoot or you have to resolve uh, complex issues or some problems? So describe like what was the issue and how do you approach to finding a solution? So yes. that's, that's a question, Kanu. Yes, sure. Like I had uh, encountered uh, one complex issue and a problem. Uh, and, uh, you know, in that uh, issue that I faced was that it was a very lengthy use case with many steps, around 100 steps from start to end. And there were many if else statements and conditions that were at the various steps, making it challenging problem to uh, troubleshoot and resolve. So the first step that I took was to gather as much information as possible about the issue from the client or the SME and the implementation team. I had several rounds of discussion with the SME and uh, to understand their requirements and pain points. During these discussions, we also identified the root cause of the issue and the critical areas that needed immediate attention. So once we had the understanding of the problem clear, I worked with the implementation team to create a detailed diagram of the use case. This diagram helped us to identify the critical areas where we needed to focus our efforts. We then brainstormed solutions and created a plan and a plan of action to address the issue. The implementation team and I worked together to develop an automation solution for the complex use case. And the solution involving uh, the designing of an automated workflow that could handle the various if and else conditions and the steps in the use case. And then we tested the solution thoroughly to ensure that it met all the requirements of the SME and implementation team. In this by doing this, uh, by doing the testing of functional test cases, we kept made sure to communicate regularly with the SMEs and the implementation team by creating the uh, UAT and uh, showing them the, uh, uh, the test cases that we have uh, done the progress. And uh, we work collaboratively till the end of the project. And finally, we had a successful solution that met the client needs. So in conclusion, like I experienced that troubleshooting and resolving complex issues and problems, I approached the problems by gathering information, creating detailed design, brainstorming, and working collaboratively with the SMEs uh, that really helped deliver our solution and met the client needs. Thanks, uh, thanks Kano, for that. Okay. 
thank you okay so the next question is also very important and most widely asked and the question is the situation like can you describe a time when you have to work with a difficult or a uncooperative stakeholders so how do you going to handle this situation and what was the outcome of those uh, experiences yes like uh, i have faced one of the uh, stakeholders a uh, senior sales manager was initially very resistant to the idea of a new system and uh, uh, he felt that uh, it would disrupt their existing sales processes so to handle this i first tried to understand the root cause of the resistance by having a one to one conversation with him i listened actively to the concerns and perspectives and made sure to acknowledge him uh, uh, his expertise and experience in the sales department i then explained the benefits of the new crm system and how it would improve the overall sales process after the conversation i also provided him with some relevant data and examples from other companies that had implemented similar systems and i also made sure to involve him in the project planning process and take the proper feedback into account while designing the new system as a result the sales manager became more receptive to the project and even started providing valuable insights and suggestions eventually the new crm system was successfully implemented and the sales team reported imp improved efficiency and productivity so in conclusion i believe that active listening empathetic communication involving stakeholders in decision making process can really help in handling such difficult situations and achieve positive outcomes that's it yes great kanu uh, thanks for that input okay so uh, next question is on change management so can you describe a time when you had to adapt to a changing business environment or a situation and how do you adjust your approach and what was the outcome of that yes so as a uh, 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 senior business analyst i had uh, several instances where i had to adapt to changing business environments or situations so uh, one thing uh, with a retail company and uh, we had uh, to pivot our strategy uh, due to covid-19 pandemic so initially our business plan was centered around in in store sales and foot traffic but however when the pandemic hit it uh, decreased significantly and we had to shift our focus on online sales as a result we had to make changes to our product offerings supply chain and marketing strategy to adjust my approach i collaboratively uh, uh, worked with sales and marketing teams to understand our new customer needs and worked with the product teams to adjust our product offerings we also had to renegotiate our contracts with suppliers and logistic providers to ensure a smooth transition to an online sales model the outcome of these changes were that to maintain our revenue and even increase our profitability we were also able to retain our customers and attract new ones and thanks to our efforts to understand and address their changing needs and finally the overall experience taught me the importance of being flexible and adaptable in the changing business environment and it also highlighted the need for effective communication and collaboration across departments to ensure a successful transition Great. so that's it great kanu thank you thanks okay so we started with the data and we are going to end with the data so this is sure. our uh, question number 10 for today and that is that can you describe a time when you had to use your analytical skills to identify a trend or any pattern in data and how do you discover this particular trend and what was the result kanu yes so uh, 
as a business analyst, uh, many opportunities I got to uh, use my analytical skills to identify and the trends and patterns in data. So one example uh, I uh, feel when I was working in healthcare company and they wanted to improve its patient satisfaction scores. So to achieve this goal, I analyzed the patient feedback data and discovered the pattern that uh, indicated patients were less satisfied with the communication skills of the medical staff. So to confirm this trend, I conducted a survey of the medical staff to gather their perspectives on communication with patients. After analyzing the survey results, I discovered that medical staff lagged the necessary training and the skills to communicate effectively with patients. So based on my insights, I recommended that the company invest in communication training for medical staff and also implement new communication protocols and tools to help improve communication between staff and patients. As a result of these changes, the company uh, patient satisfaction scores improved significantly and patients reported feeling more comfortable and improved informed during their medical visits. This improved patient satisfaction not only led to increased patient loyalty, but also contributed to company's bottom line by reducing the number of patient complaints and improving the overall reputation of the company in the community. So this was one of the uh, major uh, things I faced. Okay, I think uh, we have uh, done with today's session, Kanu. So yeah. thanks for uh, sharing your wealth of knowledge with all of us. It will help uh, business analyst community for sure. And uh, whoever is watching this uh, video, friends, please provide your support in the forms of like. We require your likes. We require your uh, comments to motivate to motivate all of us. You know, so we create more engaging videos like this. Uh, so with this thought, uh, thank you, Kanu. And uh, guys, please subscribe, like, and comment. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sunan. Thank you very much. Bye.